Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to a new weekly reading slash writing vlog. I say weekly, it's not always weekly. If you're wondering my, why my hair is like this, it's because there's a massive spot just under that. So I, I'm using this as a some sort of shield. Um, I'll bring you up to date with where I am with my reading. So I'm still reading The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I'm about two thirds of the way through now. I'm actually regretting not... Um, not tabbing it out as I went, but hey ho, um, I probably won't do a review of this because of that, but I probably will reread it at some point. So, um, so there's that. So I'm reading that. Then I'm going to be reading The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor, which will be a buddy read with Anthony Andrews. And uh, also last night in bed I finished reading Olala by Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, so this is Penguin, modern classic, mini black classic, number 19. Stevenson's chilling Victorian gothic novella about decaying aristocracy, vampirism and tormented love. And I did like the ideas in this. I just don't really like Stevenson's writing style. Um, I kind of had the same problem with Treasure Island, although I enjoyed that a bit more. But some of his other stuff as well I picked up and just not really got into. So um, I would have enjoyed that a lot more if it had been written by Henry James, I think. But um, still, it was alright. So yeah, that is my update for now. I'm off to, I'm actually going to go and record some of my audiobook of uh, Formerly. So you guys let me know as well if you want to hear... Um, I might do a video that's like chapter one of this audiobook I've been making. And then you can give me your feedback. So uh, let me know. Alright, I'll see you soon. They say there's no such thing as bad publicity. I didn't know about that, but we were sure as hell hitting the headlines. To add further irony, the journalist's profile went live on our website. Panic attack doing this! Anybody want to buy some books? Signed books for sale? Or you may get your nipples electrocuted. Shut up. I scored 35! Yeah, I'm selling these uh, £7 per book or £10 for two. And you get a pen and a bookmark and stuff. And we can do it in dollars for you Americans. Plus postage, obviously. Yeah, let me know. Alright, I still have this massive spot on my face, so I'm still hiding my face. Hopefully it gets well soon. I was thinking about going to an open mic later, but I might not just because I feel a bit self-conscious. So, uh, yeah. I'm watching PewDiePie pa play uh, Batman, the Telltale Games thing. Uh, also, I just wanted to give you a quick update in terms of my reading. So, I finished reading The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This was a 5 out of 5 for me. Um, I kind of expected it to be, I guess, because I've heard a lot of good things about it and I've enjoyed her poetry, but um, just never got round to it. So I'm glad I finally did, and I'm already looking forward to rereading it. I'm not going to do a full review of it or anything like that, but I just did just think that, again, the mental health representation in it was... Um, you know, spot on. I think in the end there was uh, this uh, biographical note and someone said it was like a feminist J.D. Salinger, which I quite liked. I thought that was quite a good description of it. Um, so yeah, and now I'm reading The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor. So this is a buddy read with uh, Anthony Andrews. And I'm enjoying it all right so far, but um, you know, it's, it's on track to be like a three or 3.5 out of five, I think. I'm not particularly enjoying the writing style, to be honest, but um, We'll see, maybe I'll get into it some more as we go on. So I'm only 32 pages in. But uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. Other than that, I've been working, tidying. Oh, I had my driving lesson earlier. Uh, the driving guy said it was my best yet, so that was good. And uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, I'll see you soon. Oh, uh, also I forgot to mention there was some footage I took uh, on my phone and I can't remember when it was. So I'm just gonna show that here because uh, I don't know, you might wanna see it. Well, here we go. But uh, this is undated, I don't know when it was. <laughs> Leave me alone. You're such a... Oh, oh. <laughs> Can I use the mouse? Ow! Ow! You're on my arm! Ah! Ah! Oh, you bastard, you broke the fucking skin. Whoa! Also, Fuck no, you have to be a ninja with this cat around. I literally, I'm on my side. He, he won't let me work, he's being an attack cat. Fuck! Back in the day, we did our bit.
I made spicy quinoa chili. Hurrah! I'm going in. I've never made quinoa before. Hello! I still have this spot on my face, but it's not as bad, or at least I've gotten used to it now. Um, what was I going to update you on? So last time I told you I'd finished reading The Bell Jar. I have, uh, or at least I think I told you I finished reading The Bell Jar. Five out of five anyway, it was excellent. I'm also counting this as read, even though I haven't actually read it, but that's because it is uh, Circles of Hell by Dante, and it's part of Inferno, and I've read, um, you know, the trilogy, and well, I read Inferno by itself, and then I read uh, The Divine Comedy and reread Inferno then. So I feel no need to really reread this, but it is like a four out of five. You should read it. Um, and then I have been reading The Chalk Man, which is a buddy read with Anthony Andrews. I'm currently about 78 pages in. So this is basically about like somebody was found dead and there are these uh, chalk figures are part of the plot. So as you can see here, the uh, like the hanging chalk man. Um, and it kind of flicks between the past and the present. I say the present, it's like 2016. And uh, I've got to be honest, I'm not really enjoying the past sections too much. But um, I think maybe that's because I don't like the... I don't like the way it's written and like it's from the perspective of like younger kids and I just I don't like kids to be honest so <laughs> no offense Anthony who is probably the same age as the characters but um, he said he liked the future bits as well so yeah I'm gonna keep on cracking on with this Anthony's on page like 290 and I'm on page about 80 so I need to I mean it's only 345 pages long so I just accidentally read the last line there as well and it said not my son and I think that might be an important thing <laughs> whoops but um yeah I mean I'm gonna keep reading it and uh, see how far I get on so yeah and in the meantime I'm just doing a bit of editing now and also working on that audiobook as well 
Yeah. It's Ali. I'm watching Hardback Order. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ah, and it won't Maybe pause. This was not the best choice. Okay, so it is Thursday. Yes, it's Thursday. Uh, it's Valentine's Day, in fact. Um, uh, and uh, yes, I'm not going to say anything about that. I'm going to hide again. Um, yeah, I have been reading the chalk, man. I am very near the end now. I'm on page 270 of 346. Uh, it's alright. It's just a bit of a generic thriller. I'm, it's got better than it was, but it's still only on par for like a 3.5 out of 5. I think Anthony's finished it and gave it a 4 out of 5. Um, you know, it's it's alright. Whether I would recommend it above any other thrillers... No, I, I don't know whether... Maybe it's just that thrillers aren't really my genre, I guess. I don't know. But uh, yeah, cracking on with that, I've also read some more of uh, The Tomb and other short stories by H.P. Lovecraft, which is my bedtime book. So I'm going to do that. Um, I've been slept in late today and not been feeling at my best, but it's alright. Um, I'm going to do some cleaning of the house now, possibly a little bit more audiobook while I've got my set up. And um, tomorrow I have got my driving lesson and then I'm going to Oxford for the weekend. So I will take my camera along. Uh, yes. All right. Okay, so I had a comment on uh, reading vlog number 22 from the Flipbook Reviews who said, LOL, is it a towel? No, it's Biggie. I would still love to see some Bright Eyes covers. So I'm gonna do some Bright Eyes covers for you. Because basically, I play guitar to like de-stress and I'm very stressed after today's driving lesson. So I'm gonna play guitar for a bit and then I'm off to town and then to Oxford. So I'll play a couple of songs and then we're going to Oxford. Stop pinging, I should mute that thing. Jesus. All right, anyway. So if you wanna be with me With these things there's no telling We just have to wait and see But I'd rather be working for a paycheck Than waiting to win the lottery mm -hmm. with you oh does he know that place below your neck that your favorite to be touch and does he cry through broken sentences like i love you far too much does he lie awake listening to your breath worry you smoke too many cigarettes busy coughing now on a bathroom floor for every speck of tile there's a thousand more that you will never see And lives on a boat.
This is a pub. <laughs> it's a double base. Hello, I'm in unfamiliar surroundings. We're in, we're in Oxford. Let's investigate some books. What we got? I mean, clearly a woman of taste. Need to read this myself. Neil Gaiman, oh, Philip K. Dick, and it's one I haven't read. Handmaid's Tale, best book of last year. In Cold Blood, that was in my top 40. Oh, it's a vintage version of train spotting. Damn, that is, that is cool. Bottle of JD, as you do. Spike Milligan, Ted Hughes, no way. Plus then, I mean. Charity shop books. That is the old library. Yeah. But they won't let me in. Oh, he's going in. <gasps> Wait. I don't, see, I don't see literally no books.
Yum, yum, yum. So right, I've got to get video evidence or it didn't happen. Oh, that's nice. So this is the Grey Friars building. Yeah, the Grey Friars building. It's very nice. And we're in Oxford. No, we are right. Yeah, I do. Say hi. <laughs> that was incredibly zoomed. I'm sorry. Someone is a little bit worn out, aren't they, Biggie? Because you've been attacking me all evening. Yes, I know. Oh yes, it's good to see you though, it's good to be home. Yes, good boy. Oh no, see, look, attack again. Yeah, see, no! Okay, well as you can see, I am back from Oxford. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick update on the books that I finished reading while I was away, and then we'll uh, sign out for this week's reading vlog. So, I'm trying to figure out the order they're in. That wasn't it. So the first one I picked up and finished was Balthazar Gracian, How to Use Your Enemies, Penguin Mini Model number 12. One second, let me mute my computer. And the blurb for this is, a 17th century Spanish priest's shrewd maxims on using guile and pragmatism to succeed in a dangerous world. I'll read you a couple of excerpts, actually. So, um, don't be brittle as glass in dealing with people, and especially with friends. Some people crack easily, revealing their fragility. They fill up with offence and fill others with annoyance. They reveal a nature so petty and sensitive that it tolerates nothing, in jest or in earnest. The slightest thing offends them, so insults are never necessary. Those who have dealings with them have to tread carefully, always attending to their sensibilities and adjusting to their temperaments, since the slightest snub annoys them. They are completely self-centred, slaves to their own pleasure, in pursuit of which they'll trample over everything, and idolators of punctilu punctiliousness. Be instead like a lover whose condition is akin to the diamond in its endurance and resistance and um, there was some great stuff in this actually it's almost like the art of war but uh, well it reminds me of the art of war I guess but I, I mean it says to succeed in a dangerous world I mean it's like a more modern art of war when you're not talking directly about how to deal with like war and armies and whatnot you're dealing with friends and enemies I guess I gave it a four out of five then I read Rudyard Kipling the gate of the hundred sorrows number 24 uh, opium dens, curses, ghostly tombs, these sinister tales of Imperial India made Kipling's name as a writer. And, um, you know, they were actually quite brutal. So there was one in there, for example, where um, uh, one of the local boys um, killed himself because he'd, he'd, you know, let himself down in his job. And uh, he felt that, like, it was such a, a dishonour to him and his family that he was better off uh, killing himself. And uh, and then the characters in it then try to make it look as though he's died of, um, you know, typhoids or, or, or something like that. I can't remember what now. Um, and that's, again, to protect and to, you know, to not let his family know the, the, the real truth, I guess. Uh, I gave this one a four out of five, too. It was very good. Very different to the Jungle Book as well. Then I read The Eve of St. Agnes by John Keats. So we've got here the, rom ro the romantic poet's most lyrical enchanting verse on myth, sensuality, dreams and superstition. I'll read you just uh, one stanza of it. So he followed through a lowly arched way, brushing the cobwebs with his lofty plume. And as she muttered, well, a uh, well a day, he found him in a little moonlight room, pale, lattice, chill and silent as a tomb. Now tell me where is Madeline, said he. Oh, tell me, Angela, by the holy loom, which none but secret sisterhood may see, when they St. Agnes's wool are weaving piously. So there we go. Uh, 3.5 out of uh, 5 for me. It, you know, it, the romantics and just old poets in general aren't really my bag. I prefer, you know, 20th century and beyond poetry. However, I can still respect it for what it is, you know, and I, I did enjoy reading it, and I'm glad that I did. Then I finished The Tomb and Other Tales of uh, Horror by H.P. Lovecraft. So... I kind of had a love-hate relationship with this book because it took me a while to get into Lovecraft's writing style and I still didn't totally enjoy it, to be honest. Uh, I'll give it a rating now. I think I gave it a 3 out of 5, maybe a 3.5. 
And uh, I mean, there are some really good stories in here as well, though. There was also one that he ghost wrote for uh, Harry Houdini, which was really interesting. And uh, yeah, I mean, I read it. I read it as my bedtime book because I was sort of struggling to enjoy it too much as a main book. And uh, yeah, it, it was all right. I will read more Lovecraft, but um, I'm in less of a hurry now. Uh, and I'm sorry because I know everyone always tells me that I'll love Lovecraft. And I just didn't, but he he wasn't bad. He just wasn't as good as I was ex expecting, I guess. Uh, and then here we have Film It Cuts, Sh Sunshine and Lollipops, Volume 1, Short Stories by Ollie Jacobs. Um, and these are, uh, well, as it says, short stories. And actually, they all kind of stuck with me. I, I forgot an index that would help, so let's have a look. There are some issues with it in terms of it being an indie book. There are a few mistakes. Uh, there was the wrong there used at one point and like some missing apostrophes and stuff. Weird formatting here and there, like no page numbers and whatnot. But I actually gave this a 4 out of 5. I thought it was very good. Starts with iZombie about uh, a blogger during the zombie apocalypse and then they basically become infected. Um, standoff, that was a, um, uh, like, a, almost, yeah, well, as it sounds, like a standoff between a gang and the police. Uh, what else do we got? He's a growing lad, that's about a kid that just doesn't ever stop eating. Um, the writer writes, which was probably more relevant than ever, which is about how we're, we're quick to vilify, you know, say a school shooter if they write violent stories and whatnot. Um... Xavian, which was just super weird. I'm not even going to go into it. Coma, which was uh, really interesting. And uh, Strange Days in High Wycombe, uh, part one as well, which is an excerpt of a, a full novel which I've read and reviewed and enjoyed. So anyway, that brings me up to date with my reading. I have now started reading Thomas Hardy, A Woman Much Missed, which is some more poetry, but I will talk about this in my next reading vlog. Uh, in the meantime, I need to go and film a haul because I hauled some stuff while I was away. And also, I shall be uh, reviewing the Ollie Jacobs book for Tarden Danes Indie Read Along. So yeah, there we have it. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.